What is the hookup culture like? Is it clicky? Do they really do drug tests? Thoughts on the new SAS logo? Hi guys, it's Daisy. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi. I'm Daisy. I was on the spring 2022 voyage of semester at sea and I'm doing the big SAS Q&A today. I asked you guys on my Instagram story, what are your burning questions about SAS? I compiled a big list. I also have done a previous SAS Q&A while I was on the ship actually. So if you want to go check that one out, I'll leave it linked below in the information cards. And if I don't answer a question in this Q&A or the other Q&A, be sure to comment it down below. I will get back to it as soon as I can. And if you have a question, I'm sure someone else has the same question. So that's my little spiel let's get into the video so i've divided these questions up into a few different categories we have specific to my voyage ship life academics port life and general let's just dive right in um so the first question we're gonna go with is how is readjusting to normal life so as you guys know sas is a really life-changing experience and you are on such a high for the entire four months that you're on the voyage i mean it does have its highs and lows but overall it's an incredible experience once you get home though you definitely experience a post-study abroad low you tank you get home you're tired you're overwhelmed it's really difficult to transition back into your normal life, your normal routine, going back to work, being with your family all the time, being away from your friends that turned into family over the course of the last four months. So there are definitely a lot of mixed emotions that I and my fellow voyagers went through coming home after April 20th. And that actually brings us to the sponsor of today's video. If you just got home from study abroad and you're also feeling a little bit anxious, overwhelmed, depressed, BetterHelp is here to help you. All you do is fill out a questionnaire that BetterHelp provides and they will match you with a therapist that's right for you within 48 hours. You're able to talk to your therapist in a secure online format and at your convenience. You can exchange phone messages, text messages, do video calls. All of it is secure and safe and private to you. And so since it's an online platform, they might be able to offer you help that you wouldn't be able to get in your local area. And if you're chatting with a therapist and it's not working out, you can request a new one free of charge. I have been talking to a therapist through BetterHelp and she has been providing me with so many different resources, little journal prompts. And we've been talking a lot about the way of coping with the overwhelming feelings that I've been having coming back from study abroad. If you want to join the over 3 million people that have taken charge of their mental health and sign up for BetterHelp today, I will give you the link in my description, betterhelp.com slash daisyblake72, and you can get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash daisyblake72 for 10% off your first month. Okay, the only other question that I've gotten about my voyage specifically it's pretty obvious, I feel like, for mine. Did you feel restricted by the pandemic and the COVID restrictions? My voyage was definitely a unique one. Um, we did sail during the COVID-19 pandemic in spring of 2022, so it was kind of um, dying down as far as restrictions in country went, but on the ship, we were required to wear masks everywhere. We had to take tests, and if you were tested positive, you had to quarantine. In some cases, you had to get off the ship and quarantine in country. Luckily, I was never quarantined um, except for the five-day lockdown that we had which I did vlog if you want to go check that out and then also my roommate did get a false positive test result so we were in quarantine for about a day when we were in Cyprus I think that honestly it brought us all closer together we kind of bonded over the fact that our voyage was not going to be what we signed up for however many years ago we signed up or months ago that we signed up I think the biggest way it affected us is our voyage itinerary because obviously it was a lot different than the normal SAS itinerary but then again what is a normal voyage? SAS is such a unique experience for every voyage that like I didn't feel inhibited by the restrictions. I feel like I still got the full SAS experience. Okay let's talk about ship life. What is and isn't worth the money on the ship? Okay so on the ship you can purchase a lot of different things there's the sas merch store there's the spa there's the fancy dining there's the snack bar um worth the money personally i really liked using the laundry service you could get your laundry done you just put it all in a bag outside your cabin and i believe it's seven dollars a load but i preferred that much to doing laundry in my sink or doing my laundry with a scrub up, simply because I didn't have the time for that. I don't know, I think that was worth it. And then the snack bar is worth it in moderation. I know some people racked up a lot of money uh, being in charge of the snack bar. That wasn't me personally because I knew that 
I could fall into a deep hole in the snack bar. Fancy dinner was amazing. I only did it once. I think you only really need to do it once or twice to be able to, you know, get the experience under your belt. But it is really nice to dress up for dinner and like take pictures on the ship. But theoretically, you could dress up and go to Lido in Berlin. So it all depends on how you want to spend your money. I don't think there is necessarily anything on the ship that I would say isn't worth the money. And I get asked a lot, how you get charged on the ship. You have to put a credit card on file and it's all charged to your shipboard account. And so basically your shipboard account is that credit card. What is the hookup culture like slash dating culture like? I think it's whatever you want to do. You know, there are definitely people that came on with the college hookup mentality. Some people came on with their partners. Some people came on and their partner was at home. So it really depends on what you want out of your SaaS experience, but the hookup culture definitely exists. It's just if you want to partake or not. Is there much drama on the ship slash is it clicky? I think that it is clicky depending on the friend group. I think that a lot of these answers are gonna be like, depending on what you want out of your SaaS experience. Yes, it is clicky, but also a lot of friend groups shift, especially about halfway through the voyage. I noticed there was a lot of friends groups shifting, not in a good or bad way, just people realized that they wanted to meet more people on the voyage and travel with different people and just experience what SaaS is like with other friend groups. But if you're in a friend group and you're not really vibing with it, People are very open to making new friends on SAS. That's what we signed up for. Yeah, I would say it is a little bit clicky, but not in like a toxic way. As far as drama, I also just think that's depends on who you're friends with. But yes, obviously word travels fast on the ship. New rumors, new drama also travels fast. So if you're caught up in drama, it'll only probably be like three days. Although in SAS time, three days is a long time. Do with that information what you will. What is your go-to snack bar order? That's a good question. I would say my, my top three smoothies were Dexter Special, obviously, mango pineapple and strawberry banana. I also really love to go for Pringles. I had a lot of Pringles on the ship. It had an embarrassing amount of Pringles on the ship, but did you really go on SAS if you didn't have a small Pringle problem? No, I don't think so. Okay, kind of going off of that, was the food good slash good options for people with dietary restrictions? Okay, I think that my friend Courtney answered this better in her SAS Q&A because she has dietary restrictions. Um, I don't really have dietary restrictions, but I know that if you're like lactose intolerant, you can request um, to have non-dairy milk. Uh, and if there's something that isn't suitable to your needs that's out at the buffet, you can always talk to the kitchen and they will like get you some like grilled chicken or some pasta. And they'll definitely make sure that you have something that you're able to eat since you are paying to be able to eat on the ship included in your tuition. But there's usually like a meat option, a fish option, there's always a pasta option, and then there's always a salad bar and a sandwich option. Other than that, they usually have a few different drink choices like juices, lemonades, iced teas, whatever. And also water is always available at meal times. If you want any food in between that time, you'll have to go to the snack bar or you'll have to buy snacks in port and bring them on the ship so you can have those at your disposal as well. Explain the Wi-Fi and library computers situation. What can you access on the library computers? Okay, I talked about this a lot in my other SAS Q&A. So there's internet and intranet. Internet is what you can use like social media and contact your family, blah, blah, blah. That's what internet is. Intranet is for like school use only, so they have everything preloaded onto it. Anything that has to do with like life on the ship will be in intranet. And so you have unlimited intranet and they have very limited internet unless you buy a Wi-Fi package. Um, and then the library computers have internet on them. You can use them 24 seven, as long as you aren't hogging them, just be polite with your um, library computer usage. But that's what a lot of people would use to book their Airbnbs, book port travel. How did you find your roommate? I found my roommate, Elizabeth, through our group chat on GroupMe. If you're on a future SAS voyage, definitely try to get in on that GroupMe because that's where everyone's asking all the questions um, and finding roommates. So I joined the outside double group chat on GroupMe. It was like a sub group chat of our SAS group chat. And we did like a slideshow thing. So everyone made two slides and like just told everyone about themselves. So I clicked through all the slides. I saw Elizabeth, I'm like, she looks like she'd be a decent roommate. So I DM'd her on Instagram and the rest is history. Do they really do drug tests? Yes, they do. Um, the people that they choose for the drug tests are randomly selected. Randomly selected, meaning I believe some of them are randomly selected and then some of them, if there are rumors floating around that you did drugs import, you will be selected. 
Okay, let's talk academics, schoolwork, professors. Were the professors interactive with the students? Absolutely, a lot. Well, in my case anyway, I took two communications classes, one tourism class and global studies on the ship, and all of my professors were amazing. I think that it really depends on the classes you're on. The professors I had, I really loved them. They're some of my favorite professors I've ever had. And yes, they were very, very interactive, but also I feel like communications classes are very discussion-based, so I think it does depend on the class. But outside of class two, you'll be eating lunch, eating dinner at the same time as them. So you will be interacting with them outside of class and you will see them in port too, which is also really fun. So they definitely aren't there just to, you know, be in their own little bubble. They want the SAS experience too. Was it difficult to edit? while having classes. So if you didn't know, I was a student vlogger for my voyage. Me and my friend Emma Romano were the two student vloggers. Obviously, if you have spent five minutes on my channel, you'll see that I vlogged every single port. I vlogged so many stretches at sea. So I essentially was a full-time student and I was full-time like doing all of my vlog stuff at the same time. So it was pretty difficult to juggle at some points and I did fall behind as you saw. I posted like my last ass videos I think in June. Um, I was very, very on top of it for the beginning of the voyage. The only thing that really got me was the Bay of Biscay when we were going through France, which is really rough seas and I was like so sick the entire time. And then after that, I really wanted to like live in the moment and be really present for our last few stretches at sea because that's when we had sea Olympics. Everything was wrapping up. Like I was like, I'm not gonna see these people for so long. So I wanna make sure that I'm spending as much time with them as possible. Um, but yeah, it was difficult to juggle, but I made a good schedule for myself and I prioritized all my schoolwork. So I did, a lot of my assignments like way way ahead of time so I had a lot of time to edit my videos and I also have been doing YouTube for a couple I'm uh, not a couple years like eight years now so I have my editing like down to a science I have a pretty good system going how was the class workload I think this depends on your classes my classes were all calm classes so a lot of it was discussion based but we did have I think two big papers and a mid I don't think we had a midterm actually but we did have final exam um, but then it, uh, yeah, it just depends on what classes you're in. I've already taken all of my other classes for my major. So these were the last classes, um, before I graduated. So I was already familiar with a lot of the concepts. So it wasn't that difficult for me. Okay. Let's talk about life in port. Favorite and least favorite port. Oh, it's so hard to choose. I think that my favorite, well, I loved Greece, France, Scotland, but I've already been to all three of those before SAS. So I'm not going to count them in this. Mm, I think I'm gonna go with Malta. I feel like it was just really good vibes. I did an ATP tour, I did horseback riding, I spent a lot of time with my friends. You can go watch the vlog, it was a good one. Least favorite? When I say least favorite, I don't mean I didn't like my experience there, but I would say my least favorite was probably Cyprus, just because we were there in like such a weird time of year where everything was closed. The port was in kind of a weird location, so we had to take taxis or ride shares to go anywhere. And it was just like terrible weather the whole time we were there. But I'd love to return to Cyprus in the summer or springtime when their tour season's in full swing because I would love to check out Paphos when it's actually like a little beachy area. I am Napa when it's like a nice little beachy area um, because it was pretty cold and rainy the entire time we were there. But I do have some core memories from that port, I must say. Can picky eaters function in port? I think yes. I think that you need to be more open to trying new things um, when you're on SAS, like food included, because I feel like food is such an important part of culture and at least try something new in every country. That is what I would say. I was a picky eater before I started traveling and now I will eat like anything and everything. What was your spending budget versus what you spent? Um, I think that I saved around five to 7,000 for import travel before SAS and I spent pretty much all of it and probably more than that. So my advice for spending in port is make a budget. If you really wanna to stick to that budget, stick to that budget. If your friends are doing things that are too expensive, maybe find a different friend group to travel with. And there are definitely different people with different budgets on board. Like there are people that will spend thousands of dollars on an Airbnb or like experiences. And then some people will be completely budget traveling, staying on a ship, staying in hostels. So it really depends on what kind of experience you want um, as far as how much money you'll spend. Best ways to pay in port, cash versus credit. I used my credit card for pretty much everything. There were only a few instances where I needed cash, but then again, we had most of our ports in Europe, so 
they, I feel like, were more accessible as far as having cash versus credit options. And I feel like a lot of places actually preferred credit card to cash. How much can you expect to spend in port? Again, this depends on your travel style, it depends who you're traveling with. Don't feel like you need to spend more to fit in. There are definitely people on the voyage that are like, daddy's money, have mommy and daddy's credit card ready to swipe it at any expense um, and then there are others who have saved for years for this and have a really tight budget that they'd like to stick to so it really depends where on that spectrum you are you'll find your people you'll find a good good swing of things to travel i would say try to spend the least amount possible in the first half of the voyage just so you know you have enough money <laughs> to survive the last half of the voyage because some people really went crazy in the first few ports. What bag did you use in port? I used my Baboon to the Moon Go Bag. I have a video on my channel called How to Pack for Study Abroad where I show that bag and like the specs of it. So if you wanna look at that, check it out. I loved it. It was um, like a duffel bag and it also converts to like backpack straps. And I really liked that. Some people used like little rolling carry-on, some people used regular backpacks. Again, just depends on your travel style, but I used a duffel bag and I really liked it. Okay, let's talk about just some general SAS things. Thoughts on the new SAS logo? No. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Advice for future voyagers. Just go in with an open mind. You'll find your people. You hopefully won't go broke and it's gonna be the best experience of your life. What suitcases did you bring and can they fit under your bed? A lot of people swear by the L.L. Bean rolling duffels. I personally brought two hard shell suitcases because I had recently bought them and I really didn't want to spend the money on new suitcases. I would recommend bringing suitcases that nest if you're gonna do hard shell. I fit one of them under my bed. You can see in my cabin tour, I fit one of them under my bed, like opened and then I slid it under that way and then the other one we kept in our bathroom and then Liz's suitcases, I believe nested and they were in our closet because there's like a space in the closet for a suitcase. Sorry, there's like something on my nose, okay. What is the most stressful part and how can I prepare to lessen the blow? Okay, for my voyage, it was definitely COVID. Hopefully no other voyages have to deal with the pandemic, but it, that definitely was the most stressful part. The most stressful part is getting your first shipboard account balance because it's either gonna be really low or really high, I feel like. And to lessen that blow, just keep track of how you're spending on the ship because it is very, very easy just to scan your ID card at the snack bar every night. Like go and buy some SAS merch at the merch store. Just keep track of your spending. Then you know you won't go broke. Was it hard being in such a fast paced environment for so long? Absolutely yes. Um, but luckily uh, I was able to just like go to my cabin if I needed some alone time. Sorry, my camera keeps dying. Um, yeah, you're in such a fast-paced environment, people will understand if you need a break. <laughs>